No. The nation is celebrating Valentine's Day. To me and to you, Valentine's Day just simply represents love. And that's what we're going to be talking about this morning. The men of the congregation showed our love to the women last night. And uh, we showed our love to the self bathing too much. Proverbs chapter 31, 10 through 31, we won't go through all those verses. But pay attention to, who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. Preacher, what does virtuous really mean? It means morally good. To have a morally good wife that knows the difference between good and evil and tries to do good. She is worth more than all the rubies in the world. God made her somewhat smaller than we men. They're not quite usually as physical strong. But their strength is seen day by day, hour by hour, as she faces the trials of life, of being a wife, a woman, mother and she does it with zeal sometimes fire in her eyes it's tempered always with love and it is almost unmatchable the love that comes from a woman in her heart and the things that she does a woman frail as she may be raises her children some women raise great big boys but they're still mama and they respect her mama she's earned that respect they should respect her even when they're grown and they're stronger than mom <coughs> that's mom they should defend her at the cost of anything this virtuous wife would be one that has stood beside her husband when he was totally unworthy of her being in his corner. But as he looked around, guilty sometimes as charged, she was always there. A woman like that is worth more than rubies, it's worth all the money in the world. She is so often the strength of the family, especially in today's society. A good way to describe her is in 1 Peter 2 9. As I read that, you're going to be thinking, some might. Well, that's to men. It is. Uh, well, why are you talking about a wife or women? It's to both. We need to realize this verse this morning as we're talking about women. Let's apply it to women. But you are a chosen generation, ladies. You're part of a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You're part of God's own special people. We need to recognize that with each other. That you may proclaim the praises of God, Him who called you out of darkness and into His marvelous light. We need to respect the ladies, especially the moral ladies of our lives. That same verse can be applied to men. All the men in this room are also a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, part of the holy nation and part of God's special people. <clears throat> the respect and the love in this building should be unmatchable outside this building. 1 Peter 3, 7, Husbands, likewise dwell with your wife with understanding. You're not one barking orders my way or the highway you're trying to understand. A little personal note and a true confession. I worked unbelievable hours. People don't even believe the hours I had to put in. I'm not feeling sorry for myself. I feel a little bit silly for working those hours, but I worked those hours thinking I'm the one that's doing all the work in the family. And then one day I slowed down and started helping in the house. I don't see how a lady does it. How does a woman raise kids, keep the house? Some today on top of that are helping to provide and trying to keep peace and harmony and unity and 
all those things in the family. <clears throat> no, husbands likewise dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as the weaker vessel. I'm not stronger than you. You do what I say is not what we're talking about. But she's an heir together with you in the grace of life. And if we can understand that, then our prayers won't be hindered, men. You know, people don't realize how much God expects us to go by every word of the book. We're to, we're to provide, we're to take care of our wife, we're to appreciate her. And if we're not treating her exactly right, our prayers will be hindered by God. The love of a husband should be one of respect. Always putting her wants. I said always putting her wants, her wishes and her needs before our own. It's about what I want. No, it's about what she wants. His physical life surrounds her with his attention to make her happy and have peace in every way. He's concerned about her <coughs> safety not only in this life, but in the life to come. He loves his wife. Now I want you to remember what I just talked about, about a, a righteous husband, a righteous man. These are the things that he should do. And girls, I ask you this. If your husband is that way, to be under his submission is not a problem. To love, adore, respect him is just flat not a problem. First Peter 3, 1 through 6, wives are to be submissive to their husbands. And if he does not obey God's word, he may be won by her conduct. This can be swapped around. If the uh, wife is not uh, going by God's word, she can be won by his conduct. But talking about the wife here, in her precious, gentle spirit, she has earned the husband's trust. What man would not trust and appreciate a righteous, morally good woman? It's a give and take proposition. The man putting her first in his life she putting him first in her life. I've had so many people in counseling. It's a 50-50 prop. It is not a 50-50 proposition. Today it's 90% in my favor and 10% in hers. And tomorrow it's 90% in her favor and 10% in mine. We have to work together. Always striving for peace and unity and love. She will win his love without a word by her conduct. Her beauty is precious and is hidden in her heart. She fully trusts in God and is submissive to a loving husband. What woman, if a woman has a husband like that and is not submissive to him, we need to go to counseling, don't we? When we're talking either way of a man or woman that is morally right with God, that is concerned with your, your peace, your protection, your, your time here on earth pleasing God, and also concerned about where you're going in eternity, how could you not love him or her? How could you not want to please him or her? That will be your valentine for the rest of your life. When a man matures and realizes that his wife is worth more than rubies, then and then only can he earn the submission of his wife and he will be her valentine till the day she leaves. When we realize that she is a great, great gift of God in our life, imagine what you'd do without him. And what a great gift that I need to appreciate. Proverbs 31, 10 through 20. Ephesians 5, 25 through 27. Husbands, love your wives. This is, this is the biggie. As Jesus Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. We're the bride, the church. He's the groom. 
He loves us. And I'm to look at the way Jesus Christ loves his creation, the church, which is beyond anything that I can fathom and try to apply that same example to me loving my wife. He's to present a portrait in his life. In my walk of life, it needs to be a picture of me loving my wife the way Christ loved the church. Ephesians 5, 1 through 2. In the walk of life, I will show how much I love her. His life and love for her is shown in the way that Christ loves the church as Christ gave himself up for the church. You know, it's so easy for a macho man to say, if somebody come after I'd step right in front of a bullet. <coughs> well, we might all do that. But what about 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year? Is that attitude what is guiding me? In my love for my Valentine. If it's not, I need to take back, take a look in the mirror and look at me. Another favorite Valentine of mine, like I said, this is not my, my favorite Valentine. This is Valentine's Day. I want to, tomorrow, I want to remember all my Valentines. In other words, all those that I love in my life. I want to remember my mother and my father. We are to obey our parents in the Lord. Why? This is right. This is the right thing to do. We honor them. This is the first commandment with promise. Ephesians 6, 1 and 2, the very first commandment. If you don't love your parents, you may not live that long life. We'd all have to live a long, healthy life. Why is it so important to God that we love our parents? You know, today in our society, you don't find a lot of that sometimes. And part of that is because I've noticed in my life that people are touched. When somebody is touched personally, it changes their outlook on everything. It's so easy to judge you're wrong, I'm right, because it's not affecting me. And when it starts affecting me, uh, I think I might have a different approach on that. See, today, most of the children are always and always have been, by the way, unaware of the tears that a mother shed for them as she was trying to raise them, as she was trying to direct them even after they were grown, just to give loving advice. And maybe they didn't see the tears because she held it back, but she shed it in their behalf. They didn't see the tears of a father. A father never cries. My father never, you don't know that your father never cried. And if he didn't cry, he hurt. When his child does wrong, it hurts. The child don't see all that all the time. He also doesn't see the sweat coming off the mother and the father in terms of trying to provide for them, the concerns for their welfare. They don't see the sleepless nights, the tossing and the turning, the agony of, can I pay my bills? I've got to take care of my child. I've got to work harder. I've got to do more. They don't see that. They don't see all the problems that your parents went through to keep them safe and happy. You think when they send you to school, they forget you, they're concerned about you all day long. What's going on? Don't be asking me. I, don't, I feel like you're 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 got me under some kind of uh, test here to know what I learned today. Well, the reason I've got you under that test is I'm concerned about you. I love you. Always provide with the needs, but if a child's not aware of that, how can he ever appreciate it? But never take for granted their willingness to strive for you all through your life. Children, honor your parents. Now today, what I see a whole lot and you see is children ridiculing, making fun of, mocking their parents that are so full of knowledge and wisdom. They're the 
ones that stayed up with you all night. They're the ones that changed their life and gave their life up for you. We need to respect our parents. And there's only so much you can do there. You know, it's like raising a child. You want to raise a child in the right way. And you do everything in your power to do it right. It'll still be up to the child one day. And I have lived, all my parents are gone and my wife's parents are gone, to see this. A parent becomes the one you're taking care of as the child one day. <coughs> And the same applies there. You can only do all you can. And once you've done all you can, there's nothing else you can do. And raising a child, when they go out on their own, they're on their own. They will answer for themselves. You will not stand between them and God on judgment day. They will stand alone by themselves. And you will too. And when it comes to the parents, you will not be judged when you've done all you can. Either way, we give all our heart, all our mind, all our soul to taking care of our loved ones. And there comes a time that's all we can do. Another Valentine that's very special to me is my whole family. Physically and spiritually. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7 describes it somewhat. Love is patient. I'm still working on that. Love is kind. It does not envy. It don't want more for me and not for you. It does not boast all the time about himself or herself. Love is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking, all about me again. It is not easily angered. Like I said, it's patient. It keeps no record of wrongs. I remember, I remember you did this like, you know, forget that. The past is the past we're just talking about today. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love is something that never breaks the spirit of the one that they love. Love is shown by encouraging and uplifting the spirit of anyone in their life. That is love. Still another favorite Valentine of mine is the church family that I'm standing in front of now. Romans 12, 10. Be devoted in your heart. Make it part of your life to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Oh, that's easy to say. That's a short verse. And that'll be one of the hardest you ever do. As you put other people, other people's needs in front of your own. I didn't come to service today because I didn't feel like it. But when I realize how much you need me, I'm going to study my Bible more. I'm going to pray more. I'm going to try to be here and help you more. I'm going to extend the fellowship of my arms, my hugs, my love, my words, because I love you. I want to encourage you. I want to make you good. I need you and you need me. We do need each other. Be devoted to one another. You know, it's a wonderful thing, and I've, I've experienced some of this today, a lot of it. I love you. I love you, brother. I love you, sister. You doing good? You know, by the way, if I told you lately I'm proud of you, I thank you for being you. When is the last time you've heard those words? Probably often. When is the last time those words came out of your mouth? If you ever need me, please call me and don't hesitate. That's love. Romans 15, 7, accept one another just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. If you're perfect, I'll accept you. Wait a minute. As Christ accepted 
He didn't accept me because I was perfect. I can guarantee you that. No, he, he accepted me when I was his enemy. This is where stirring up good works, Hebrews 10.24, I mean uh, Romans 10.24, comes in by accepting one another. We make every member feel as though that they are our best friend. They're the special one. And I try to do that. And I want to say this, and you listen to my true confession. I really do try to make you feel special to me. And it's not because I have to. And I'm not just running my mouth. It's because I want to. You're special to me because you're special to me. Man, Show you how bold I am. Be my valentine. <laughs> we need to make each other feel special. Another valentine is the most important of all. Matthew 22, 37. And listen closely to the valentine that we should love most in our lives above anybody else, even our families. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of it, with all of your soul and all of your mind. In other words, everything I've got to offer, I love God. He should dominate my thoughts all day and all night. He should dominate my actions and my reactions. He should dominate my decisions. It's all about God. God, God. The one I love. The one I respect. The one I admire. The one I praise. The one I worship. When I say something, do something, react or act, it's based on you. I want to please you. I love you more than anything else on this earth. We have that. we will pass the test in the end. I want God to be my friend. And the only way that I can have God as my friend is I've got to be His friend. The only way I can be your friend is I, I need you to be my friend. It's always vice versa. 1 John 4, 16-19 And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Preacher, would that mean if you didn't abide in God? Well, you think about it. But how do we abide in God? How do I abide in Christ? The first thing, you have to be baptized into Christ. You have to be baptized into Christ. Well, preacher, I was baptized somewhere else one time. Were you baptized into the body of Jesus Christ? Maybe. Were you baptized for the removal of your sins? No, I'd already had them removed and I just showed everybody I had. Where's that verse? Acts 2.38 says that you're baptized for the removal of your sins. Galatians 3.27 says you're baptized into the body of Christ and you put on Christ. Do you love God? Yes. Then keep His commandments. No one has ever and will ever, ever do as much as Christ has for me. He is my everything and He is my all. Love has been perfected among us in this, brethren, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. That's hard for me to grasp. When everything around me is burning up and going away and I have joined my immortal soul, uh, body, and I know this is it, for me to stand strong, tall, and bold, woo -hoo -hoo -hoo, uh, to have the boldness in the judgment day because as He is, so are we in this world. To describe my Savior, I can do it in four letters. A four-letter word. Love. Love, love. That needs to be me. That needs to be you. 
There is no fear in love. You know, talking about the little bitty women and their little frail, don't you ever, ever, ever attack a child of a mother with the mother around. <laughs> you want to see fire in the eyes. But see why that happens is called love. There's no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. And God don't want us to be tormented. But he who fears has not been even made perfect in love. If we love God, we trust God. If we fully trust Him, fully love Him, why should we have any fear? We love Him because He first loved us. You know, my love for God protects me against any and everything that the devil can throw my way. And the devil is throwing things in your plate every day. You know, we hear from each other the trials, the problems that we're going through. We think about it when we go home. We pray for each other. But we always need to remember, without any hesitation, that my father's your father. He's in control. He'll take care of you. you take care of me. He will take care of our loved ones like no one else will. I must not be afraid because one has never lost a battle. Stands by me. I'm in the midst of life and I'm having all kinds of things come at me. And if I could just see in the spirit world standing beside me is the one who has never lost a battle. Can you imagine that? The King of Kings. Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. God created the world through Him. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2 and 10. And He stands beside me and He stands beside you. Why should we fear anything? Dear Lord, this is my Valentine Day card for you. You said in John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. And Father, I will keep your commandments till I take my last breath. I may not do it perfectly, but you'll see me trying as hard as I can and sometimes failing miserably. God, I'm trying to walk in the light. I'm trying to take each step with your guidance. And I keep falling off to the left and to the right. But God, I'm on the path with the path lit by your word. Romans 8, 1 and 2. 1 John 1, 7. Because I want to be found righteous in your sight and go to heaven and be with you, my Father, my love, for eternity. Father, I will keep your commandments because I love you. And I know you love me. Valentine's Day represents love. So today, let us be united in love, church. United. Last night, those of you that were here, most of you were. Love was abounding. I mean abounding. It was a it was a thought to carry home with you, and I did. I've heard some of you say you went home, you're dog dead tired, went to sleep. I was too. But I couldn't go to sleep. I kept thinking about it. It was beautiful. Philippians 2 2, the New American Standard Version says, Make my joy complete by being of the same mind, church, maintaining the same love for one another and for God. United in spirit, taught by the Holy Spirit that is God's Word, intent on one purpose. I want to go to heaven and I want you to go to heaven. I want us all to go to heaven. I want to join heaven, uh, join hands in heaven one day. So happy Valentine's Day. In other words, I love you, church. May we rejoice in love together in heaven one day forever and ever. This may be the most important part of the sermon. And our next sermon will be a Bible study. Guys, if you've heard the gospel, Jesus Christ died for you. He was buried and He was resurrected from the dead has now gone to the right hand of God the Father as King of Kings, 
Lord of Lords, host of hosts, over His kingdom. And you want to get into that kingdom? you got to believe every word of the Bible to please God. you got to be willing to repent. What does that mean, preacher? That means I'll go against anybody. I'll go against anything. I will change anything in my life that I have to to please God and to walk in the light. I want to be yours, God. And if you will please, please help me to repent. Find the the strength to change anything, stand up to anybody I need to, then I can confess you before all men as the Son of God. And then and then only will I be baptized for the remission of my sins. I will be added to the church for the Lord Himself and I'll be baptized into the kingdom body church of Christ. Once I'm there, if I need any type of change in my life, I'll pray to you and ask for forgiveness once I'm a child of God because then I can approach you in prayer and you'll forgive me. Hebrews 10.10 10, every time. But Father, I pray for boldness, I pray for strength, and I pray for love because I know if I get enough love in me, it'll overcome any kind of fear I've ever had. If you have a need for support as we stand and as we sing.